This Week in IT, Microsoft announces updates to its AI solution, Copilot, including a rebranding of the main product name and M365 chat, general availability for Copilot in Excel, new Copilot pages, and much more. So stay tuned to find out what's new in Copilot Wave 2. Hello and welcome to the show where I discuss everything connected to Windows, Microsoft 365 and Azure. But before we get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. 48% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, today as we go live, we're on about 7,750 subscribers and I'd love it if we could push that up to 7,800 this week. So if you'd like to see this kind of weekly news summary from Petri.com, then please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Just in case you're wondering why I'm holding the microphone in my hand today, it's because the boom arm that usually holds it is broken. So that's the answer to that question, just in case you're wondering. Microsoft announced Copilot for Microsoft 365 right at the beginning of 2023. And there are a series of demos about all the impressive things that it was going to do. Now, since then, of course, it's reached general availability or at least parts of it have reached uh, GA. The problem being that Microsoft hasn't quite delivered on many of the promises that it made right at the beginning of 2023. Now, earlier this week, there was a virtual event announcing Copilot Wave 2. And the idea of this event was really to remind us about some of the announcements that Microsoft has made about Copilot earlier this year, rebrand a couple of the products, and to really deliver on some of the promises that it made with that original announcement almost two years ago. So there's a lot to cover and let's dive right in. So let's start with the rebrandings. Up until now, the main product has been called Microsoft Copilot for Microsoft 365 not easy to say. They announced this week that it's gonna be called Microsoft 365 Copilot. And of course, that's what it should have been called right from the very start. You don't have to be a genius uh, or experienced marketing copywriter to understand that this was, of course, the most sensible decision why Microsoft opted for that very wordy long description. I have no idea. Another rebranding that was announced this week is the Microsoft 365 chat that's part of Teams. So this is where you can get access to all of the co-pilots and they essentially all work together in this kind of combined chat feature. This one's always been a bit puzzling because if you go into Teams, it's just called Copilot essentially, but Microsoft are calling it something different. So it's like, well, what the hell? If you're going to give it a name, then please be consistent with the naming across all of the products so that we can understand what on earth it is you're talking about. So Microsoft 365 chat is now going to be called, wait for it, Microsoft 365 Copilot Biz Chat bit of tongue twister again, whether they're ever going to actually update the name in Teams for that application, I have no idea. That's at least the official name for it now. If you can remember back to those demos back from 2023, some of the most impressive ones were the things that you were going to be able to do with Copilot in Excel. Now, the Copilot in Excel functionality has been in preview for, you know, already a year now. And I've played around with it. And I have to admit, I'm not a big Excel user. And it's been a little bit disappointing. If I ask it to do something, it kind of just says, well, this is how you would do it potentially, but doesn't actually do it for you, like it showed in those demos. This week, Microsoft has announced that Copilot in Excel is now generally available. I haven't gone back to look at it to see whether it's improved any since I last tried it. If you're a big uh, Excel user and you've had some experience with Copilot, please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Does it live up to Microsoft's promises that they made in those original demos? I would love to know. 
They also re-announced this week that Copilot in Excel has integration with Python for those who want to perform advanced analysis. Copilot in OneDrive is also now generally available. This was first announced back in October 2023. Microsoft says that you can do things like summarize files, com compare files more easily, that kind of thing. So that experience is now generally available. One of the new features that Microsoft announced this week is Copilot Pages. Now this is aimed at making Copilot more collaborative. So if you go into the Copilot chat app, whatever they're calling it now in Teams, you can ask it questions, you can get answers, and you can copy out the output and paste it to wherever you like essentially. But at the moment there's no easy way to collaborate on the results that you get from it. Now this feature is currently rolling out and it should be generally available to everybody by the end of this month. And instead of just being able to copy out the results, you'll be able to to share it into what is essentially a loop page. Microsoft is calling it a co-pilot page. Now, the great thing about this is that once it's in that loop page, of course, you can then collaborate with other people in your organization. But most importantly, not just, you know, that's the end of the co-pilot experience. You can now just collaborate on it. You can continue to use co-pilot because it's a loop page and iterate on whatever you've initially created there and still get help from co Copilot. So this page is integrated into the Copilot app in Teams. Of course, you can access it in the Loop app as well if you want or uh, do what, with that whatever, whatever you want. But this really opens up Copilot to being a more collaborative experience. Copilot agents were announced earlier this year at Build 2024. They've been available to people who were able to access the early access program. Microsoft has essentially re-announced this capability. Copilot agents are essentially for automating and executing business processes so you can design them to work exactly for your business and Microsoft is saying that you know this is really going to be a game changer of course that all depends on how this is uh, taken uh, by organizations and whether Microsoft is able to deliver on its promises, but this is all now apparently available in Copilot Studio. These Copilot agents you'll be able to publish directly to Microsoft 365 Copilot. You'll also be able to create Copilots not just from the studio with natural language, but also from uh, the BizChat application and from SharePoint. Copilot in SharePoint has been a long time coming. It was originally announced in May 2023. And it's going to allow you to use natural language to create sites and pages within SharePoint. And some of the things that Microsoft is promising are only going to be available later this year, but essentially Copilot for SharePoint is now generally available, so you could go and try that out. Now, there are a few other things coming to the M365 apps in terms of Copilot. One of the updates that Microsoft is going to be making to Teams is the ability for Copilot to analyze not just the transcript or the chat, but both at the same time so it can essentially see what was actually said and what was said in the meeting chat as well and give you an answer based on both of those data points. Outlook this week was updated with a sort button. So you can now sort your inbox, you know, by date or by whatever uh, factor you choose, much like the legacy Outlook uh, app has had for a long time. Now, at the moment, that is quite a basic set of options uh, that you might expect to see there. But Microsoft will be adding later this year in preview the ability to sort your inbox in Outlook using Copilots. Now, exactly how that's going to work, I have no idea, of course, but we'll see. Uh, that is coming into preview by the end of this year. So that's a lot of updates that Microsoft is promising that are either already generally available or are coming in preview very shortly. It's interesting to try to really understand how this is all working out for organizations that have essentially been early adopters of Copilot. Microsoft itself is saying that one of the most transformative features, according to its clients, has been the Copilot features for meetings in Teams. And I can imagine that is probably the case. Of course, it's really great to be able to have a transcript that you can then analyze and have Copilot create tasks and assignments 
assign them to people and all that kind of thing is something that's probably going to be really powerful just on its own for organizations. But a lot of what Copilot does today kind of happens in a silo. So you can ask Copilot things, you can, uh, you know, in a chat, but you, you know, you can't share what's happening there. You can ask Copilot in the M365 chat or whatever it's called these days. But again, you can't at the moment easily collaborate and share the results of those things. Microsoft is gradually making changes to Copilot to make that easier for users so that it's not just all happening in a silo, but it's something that you can work on together with a team. Now, it's interesting that Microsoft didn't really mention Team Copilot, which is something that, again, is kind of designed to expand those features for Microsoft uh, Teams meetings. But instead of it all happening in a silo, is that there'll be this kind of personal assistant that helps you to you know, summarize Teams meetings and manage the whole process, but that works for everybody in that group rather than just one person. That should be coming maybe again at some point before the end of this year. But the real challenges are going to be getting organizations prepared for Copilot. You know, it's only as good as the data that you feed it at the end of the day. So it needs to have access to data. The data needs to be inside Microsoft 365. It needs to be sanitized and organized, preferably uh, to get great results. But I think the real challenge is really going to be getting users to adopt this stuff. You know, it can seem overwhelming. There's a lot there. And just trying to make it really easy accessible and intuitive so that users just can pick it up as part of their workflow and just change the way that they do things. That's always really hard, you know, even if, you know, doing things with Copilot makes a lot more sense in many uh, aspects of work, getting users to actually do it and change the way they do things is going to take some training and investment for organizations. And at the moment, it's all a little bit of a mess. It feels a bit like a beta product. And I think there's still some way to go to make it something that's going to be really attractive for users across the board. But Microsoft is taking steps now with Wave 2 to make that more of a reality. If you're using Copilot in your organization, I'd love to know what you think about it so far. Do let me know in the comments below. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get the video seen by more people on YouTube. I'm gonna leave you with another video on the screen now that you might find useful where I summarized last week's news. There was a fix for a very serious downgrade attack in Windows. We also talked a little bit about the issues facing Broadcom's VMware and a new deal between Oracle and Amazon Web Services. That's it from me today and I'll see you next time.